Hello friends. The aim of this video lecture is to make you completely acquainted with the entire of the J syllabus of organic chemistry. So we'll be dealing with every topics and every subtopics in this video in this series of video lecture course. Organic chemistry is a part of chemistry that can fetch you laurels in ITJ's exam. This is a section which does not require much of the time for any kind of calculations. It deals only with qualitative analysis. It does not have to be, it does, is not mathematical at all and there is no quantitative analysis in organic chemistry. Now to begin with, we'll be starting with the general effects that operates in organic chemistry that will prepare us to ultimately understand the reaction mechanism which is a chunk of the syllabus in organic. So we will uh, starting be with some of the effects like inductive effect, hyperconjugating effect, mesomeric effect, field effect and isotopic effect. After studying these effects, the foundation will be completed and will be moving on, we will venture out to study reaction mechanisms. Inductive effect is defined as the movement of sigma bonded electron to its more electronegative atom. So let's suppose there is a bond between two atoms A and B and B happens to be more electronegative than A. A bond has two electrons. One of the electrons was brought by A and the other electron was brought by B. These two electrons were supposed to be at the exact center of the two nucleuses of A and B but due to electronegativity difference, these two electrons will be more shifted towards more electronegative atom as, is, as it, it is B in our case. So this is the original position of two electrons and this was the supposed position of two electrons. This phenomena, this phenomena of movement of sigma bonded electron towards more electronegative atom is called inductive effect. As simple as that. Now, due to this movement of electron, this atom B will have an inherent negative charge polarity developed on it and this atom A will have an inherent positive charge polarity developed on it. That's it. Now, to identify whether an atom will have a minus I effect or a plus I effect, like the atom which is pulling up the electron is said to have minus I effect and the atom which is giving up its electron is said to have plus I effect. This is evidently clear that the atom which is more electronegative will have a minus I effect and the atom which is less electronegative that will have a plus I effect. Before, venture out, before we venture out into this inductive effect we need to know a proper order of common atoms or elements that you will be dealing with in organic chemistry. You need to know this electronegativity order. Fluorine is the most electronegative atom in the periodic table followed by oxygen, nitrogen. The electronegativity of nitrogen is very close to chlorine and then comes phosphorus and sulfur. Carbon and hydrogen have least electronegativity and they are, of, they are almost same electronegative. Now suppose I have a bond between fluorine and chlorine. Now I already know by the above order that chlorine is less electronegative than fluorine. Then the electronegative atom, relatively more electronegative atom here is fluorine. So fluorine will pull up the electron density in sigma bond and the negative charge polarity will be developed on fluorine and the positive charge polarity will be developed on chlorine. So this is the first stage where you need to identify which group will be operating minus i and which group will be operating plus i. Now a typical example of this would be suppose I have a bond like the one shown here and suppose I want to talk about this bond A. Now as though this bond is formed between similar kind of atom that is carbon and carbon. So if I ask you this which group, whether this ethanyl group or this acetonyl group, which group will act as a plus I operating group and which group will act as a minus I operating group, you may be tempted to say that none of them will be act as plus I, none of them will act as minus I because the bond is between similar atom that is carbon. But 
This uh, bond will be a polar bond. Although this is formed between two similar kind of atoms, but the electronegativity of both the atoms are not same because the hybridization state of the carbon are different. This carbon, if you look into, this carbon is sp hybridized and this carbon is sp2 hybridized. If you look for percentage s character, this carbon have 50% S character and this carbon has 33% S character. By increasing the percentage S character, the orbital of the carbon is more like S orbital. And the S orbital happens to be closer to the nucleus. Every attribute of S orbital in this carbon will be greater than every attribute of S orbital in this carbon. That means the hybridized orbital of this carbon will remain closer to the nucleus than this carbon. And if the orbital is closer to the nucleus that will hold the electron or attract the electron more strongly than the other orbital. For this reason this sp hybridized carbon is more electronegative than this sp2 hybridized carbon. So when we say the same atom has same electronegativity they have same electronegativity at same hybridization state. If you change the hybridization state, electronegativity value changes. And as the percentage S character increases, electronegativity value increases as well. Short. Now let's talk about toluene. Toluene means this CH3 group will be sitting at the top of the benzene ring. Let's talk about this particular bond A. Now as you can see in here, this bond A is formed between two atoms. Although both of them are carbon, but they are at different hybridization state. This carbon is sp3 hybridized. That means percentage S character is only 25%. This carbon is in the, on the hybridization state that is sp2. So the percentage S character here is 33%. Now due to difference in percentage character, they will have different electronegativity. So the one having higher percentage S character will be more electronegative. So this carbon which is on the benzene ring that is supposed to be more electronegative. So the electronic density will be shifting towards this carbon. So here this phenyl ring will have minus I effect because this is pulling up the electron and this methyl group will have plus I effect because this is giving up the electron of its bond. So that's how we look into plus I effect and minus I effect. Let's take one more typical problem. Suppose I have a bond between this acid group and this nitro group. Now here we don't have elements or atoms anymore. We have a group this is a nitro group and this is carboxylic acid group. Now we have to identify in the electrons in this bond will move to nitro group or it will move towards acidic group. Then we need to know which group has greater minus I effect. Now inductive effect is simply movement of sigma bonded electron towards more electronegative atom or towards more electronegative group. Now the group which is having more electronegative atom that is supposed to have a greater tendency to pull the sigma bonded electron. If you look into nitro group, this nitro group have three electronegative atoms based upon the electronegativity order we have seen just a moment before. Here we have nitrogen and oxygen, both atoms are electronegative and there are three electronegative atoms. If you look into the acid group, carbon and hydrogen has least electronegativity. Apart from that we have two oxygen atoms, so altogether you have two electronegative atoms. So nitro group having more electronegative atoms is supposed to pull the sigma bonded electron. So here nitro group will have minus I effect and this carboxylic acid group will have plus I effect. That's how you look into inductive effect and that's how you look which group will pull the electron and which group will push the electron. That's all from inductive effect. Now we'll be looking into the application of inductive effect. How do you apply this in organic chemistry and why at all we studied this?